Today I wanted to talk to you all about how to clean your CPAP equipment. So the things you want to clean, mask, water chamber. Now the water chamber on the ResMeds has a few pieces. As you open it up, there's a seal inside. Pull this seal out. It's got a little ridge around the side. That will get dirty. Throw it in. Water chamber itself. Throw it in. The hose. The hose is very important because the worst part of the hose is not that end. It's this end. Now that's part of the F10 ResMed mask in the bucket. This end, as you hold up to the light, you can see it's a little bit murky. And that means that there's something building up on that part of the hose. Nice and clear down there, not so much there. We want to clear that. So, what do we use to clean the equipment? Well, first of all, morning fresh. Any old detergent will do. Just a squirt. Now, detergents. Detergents will dissolve oils and fats. They're actually what we call a, a surfactant. But that's not enough. So, in comes white vinegar. Now, I use white vinegar because apple cider vinegar has a smell. And so does brown vinegar. White vinegar is basically a diluted acetic acid. And it's good. How much do you use? Well, there's nothing in there that can be destroyed by vinegar. The metallic base is stainless steel. That's resistant to, um, to vinegar. The plastic and the silicone is resistant. So I want to get this job done in a reasonable amount of time. I don't want it to, to take all day. So I'm just going to pour it in. Now I think probably about that much about half a bottle. That's probably about 900 mils a litre. Uh, if you're American, then that's about a quarter of a gallon of vinegar. Now you gotta remember the vinegar that you buy from the supermarket is already very diluted. So, now we wanna take this bucket to the sink. Here we go, under the sink. And our tap water in Australia it's pretty clean. Yes, it contains some fluoride and it contains a few other things. Chlorine. But I'm not putting this in my chamber to breathe. I'm using it to clean. And those things are neither here nor there. So this is hot water and it took a while to warm up. So the water is probably about 30 degrees. Okay, so there's my bucket. So now I'm just going to take it back to the table just so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now comes the hose. So, I'm not going to put this hose in just madly because then I'm going to get air bubbles in the hose where there's nothing to clean it. So first of all, the most important end has to go in first. This end. So we place it in gently. Okay, so I know that there's fluid. And I'm going to feed the hose in like this. It's very difficult one-handed holding a phone. One day I may invest in a proper camera or simply find a friend to hold it for me. But for now Simply going to feed the hose in like this. And what I'm doing is I'm allowing the water level to creep up the hose. Now, when I'm finished, I'm going to make sure that the other end of the hose has water in it as well. 
and I'm going to use the old trick of siphoning. I'm sure if you haven't done it yourself, you've seen other people siphon petrol or siphon something out of a tank. I just want to siphon the water through this end of the hose and then put this end of the hose under the water so the whole hose has it in. Now this is not toxic, it's simply dishwashing detergent and vinegar. And whilst it certainly won't taste great, it's not going to poison me. So here's go. here goes. <laughs> ah, yuck. Okay, so now I know my hose, despite the fact some of it is sticking out because it's a long hose. <laughs> truly disgusting. Okay, that can just sit there and soak. Okay, so simply... All we had was dishwashing detergent and vinegar. Now, how often do you do this? Well, the question is, how often does it need to be done? And that depends on where you live, on your device, on the temperature that you run your device at. I would say at least once a week, more if necessary. If you find your equipment is becoming smelly, and it's not your mask because you've washed your mask every day as you do before you use it. If you think that it needs a clean, give it a clean. Don't be afraid to use vinegar. It's completely harmless on CPAP. Can't hurt, it makes no damage whatsoever. There's nothing electrical in there, okay? The heated hose of the ResMed, the small copper elements, Yes, copper does react to acid, but this is a very weak acid. So we've just put enough vinegar in there to break down any organic particles that may have built up in the CPAP equipment. Now, on this table, I have something else. In Australia, right, um, we have this product, okay? This is a box of water that we sell it sells, it sells at the supermarket. This is a small one, five liters. It normally comes in a 10 liter box, but I bought the five simply for ease of carrying home today. This is the cleanest water you can buy in Australia. It contains absolutely nothing but H2O. As you can see, it says 100% Chlorine, fluoride, sodium, no additives, BPA free, blah, 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 blah. And a 10 liter bottle, a 10 liter box of this costs $8. Uh, five liters costs about four or five. Um, this is the cheapest water you can put in your CPAP machine. Uh, it is correct, do not use tap water if you know your tap water contains contaminants like fluoride, um, chlorine, etc., etc., or if you happen to come from Flint, Michigan, or places like that, you really do not want to put that anywhere near your respiratory system. It will make you sick. You don't want to absorb chemicals. So often people will talk about demineral demineralized water, and you can buy water that's got a label of demineral demineralized. This is demineralized. Basically means it's been double filtered or reverse osmosis. Double filtered reverse osmosis. And that's what this is. Okay, this is the cheapest way to go. Now, you can use boxed water because a few minerals is not going to harm you. Right? When you put your equipment in the vinegar, if there's any residue from minerals, vinegar will have broken it down, just like you use vinegar to remove stains inside your electric kettle, if you've ever done that. Okay. The only thing you want to keep out of your water is chemicals. So if you can get a clean source of water, even if it's spring water and it contains a few minerals, as long as it doesn't contain chlorine, fluoride or if you are a believer in chemtrails doesn't contain the microparticles in chemtrails which you don't want to absorb either you don't want to inhale either 
Okay, as long as it's a clean water source, you can use it in your CPAP equipment. Okay, the reason you don't use um, chlorine is chlorine is actually a corrosive and it will damage your equipment and it will damage your lungs. Okay, chlorine is toxic. The reason they use chlorine is to kill bacteria. And bacteria are living cells, same as you are living cells. Chlorine gas is lethal to you. Evaporated chlorine out of your tap water is not going to do you any favors. And fluoride, well, that speaks for itself. So use some common sense when you do this. When you pull your equipment out of here, just give it a quick rinse in clean tap water. If you don't have clean tap water, give it a quick rinse in this. Okay, you want to give your hose a good rinse because otherwise you're going to be inhaling the smell of vinegar and soap. And it's a little bit disconcerting. So give it a rinse, plug it all back into your CPAP, fill up your water container, make sure your mask is clean. If you need to, get a toothbrush and get into the little crevices. All right, not just in your mask. You can run your finger around that little crevice there to make sure that's all out. Okay, the places you'll find buildup is here, right, in front of my thumb. That's where, if you dribble, it'll build up there. All right, everyone dribbles when they sleep. Don't think that you're immune to being human. And this thing, get a toothbrush and just gently go around the edges. Do not pull this. It will distort. This is the seal. If you bugger this up, your CPAP machine won't work, okay? This is important to keep this in good nick and keep it clean. This is probably the only real place that you risk getting a bacteria buildup is in the little creases and grooves in this little seal. Now this is for the ResMed F10, but all the machines have seals, no matter what the brand they are. Have a look at your machine. Pull them apart as far as you possibly can without actually dismantling them and clean them. And your machine will serve you well. It will last a very long time and you won't have to replace the parts as often as, say, the manufacturer suggests. For example, these masks, manufacturers say replace them every six months. I've never had to replace a mask every six months. I normally get, well, I've never thrown a mask away, put it that way. So, and so I've got a couple. Hoses, six months to 12 months. Unless you actually break your hose, um, you step on it, uh, it's in the sun, it perishes, uh, it cracks, you don't need to replace your hose. Be very careful though with the ends of your hose. If you are rinsing your hose, do not push the end of your hose over a tap because that will stretch and then that will no longer create a nice seal on the end of your CPAP machine. And the other end of the hose, the part that fits your mask, be very careful with that because if you stretch that, then your mask won't stay attached to your hose and then you've just spent $95 to $100 replacing your hose. Australian prices this is. So this advice is relevant no matter where you are, no matter what country. Okay, how often you replace your equipment is up to you. If you have a health fund paying for this, they'll replace your equipment when they deem necessary. But looking after your equipment, that's your responsibility. This is how to do it and it's easy. It's not rocket science. There's no deep questions to ask. You can't damage your equipment. As long as you can stick your hand in there and leave it there, the temperature is safe. Now, I would say that's probably around about 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. Fahrenheit, that would be about 75, uh, 75 to 85 Fahrenheit. Okay, so we're not talking hot, but we're not talking cold. You just want it warm enough so that it's going to help break down any biomatter that's built up in your equipment okay so because you've got humidity passing through there you've got a chance of growing some biomatter i'm by biomatter i mean mold and things like that you want to kill that and you want to clean it okay if you start if you get mold growing in your tube then you're in for a, a world of hurt 
okay this is the only way you can keep it clean do this as regularly as you need to be vinegar is so cheap it's ridiculous this bottle costs about a dollar 17 australian ridiculously cheap okay you don't have to use as much as i used you can you can use less and soak it longer use more soak it less okay it's very very basic principle if you have a stainless steel kettle or a plastic kettle and you want to clean that you can put a couple of, of uh, ounces or about 20 mils into your kettle and boil it okay don't leave it in your kettle for too long because it may may corrode your elements uh, if it gets close to your electrics it'll short your electrics out but that's how you clean your kettle very easy you can use vinegar for all kinds of things it's a very universal product it's great for cleaning floors it's great for cleaning just about anything you can you can imagine vinegar is fantastic white vinegar it has almost no smell so that's why i use it with seep up seep up equipment so thank you for watching i hope you continue to enjoy our facebook page and i hope that you've gained something from this short instruction. Bye-bye.